Yo, 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 welcome back. It's Bobby King. Back with another one. Today we're watching the moment detectives found the bodies. This is like a JCS inspired. If you don't know what JCS is, it's this nigga who basically makes crime documentaries about niggas getting killed, murdered, serial killers, that type of shit. It's interesting as fuck. I wanted to watch with y'all because I love y'all niggas, man. If you like this shit, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and a comment. Let me know what you think about this shit. Let's get to the video. <laughs> On Saturday, August 28th, 2021. The Greenville County Sheriff's Office in South Carolina received an alarming 911 call. Greenville County 911, what's the location of your emergency? Okay, uh, the thing is, a sitter was supposed to show up to see with my mom today, and she's in her 80s. Her name is Edna. Damn! Man, what the fuck? Ed, can someone help Edna? Damn! So, and she old as hell. Show up with, this is not like her. She shows up like clockwork. Something's wrong. The sitter being referred to is an 80-year-old woman named Edna Suttles. Even though Edna is retired, she frequently assisted the elderly community in her hometown of Traveler's Rest, South Carolina. According to the caller, it was very uncharacteristic of Edna to be absent without giving notice. Law enforcement was immediately dispatched to Edna's residence to check up on her. They knocked at her door several times and looked through her window, but Edna never answered. The only person home was Edna's dog. Mm. Considering Edna's age, along with the unusual circumstances, authorities were concerned that Edna may have had some sort of emergency. So they made many efforts to locate her. First, they tried calling her cell phone, but there was no answer. The Hell no. <laughs> you already know, bro. You then, heard? they contacted Edna's family and friends, but they were also unsure where she was. They then contacted multiple hospitals near her home. Each hospital confirmed that Edna was not a patient there. Law enforcement promptly opened a missing persons case and obtained a search warrant for her residence. Inside her home, there was still no sign of Edna. Her purse, shoes, and medication were missing, and her gold Jeep Grand Cherokee was not parked in the driveway. There was also no sign of a forced entry, and nothing suspicious that would indicate foul play. Damn. Law enforcement put out a bee on the lookout, aka a bolo on Edna's Jeep, and continued to canvas the area near her home. What, what dumbass nigga gonna be riding around in her Jeep, bro? What dumb? <laughs> ain't no way. Like, ain't no way. Because it... <laughs> You know how the murderers be. The murderers be cocky as shit, bro. Ain't no way a nigga driving her. A week after issuing the bolo, on September 3rd, 2021, the vehicle was spotted parked at a Best Western Hotel in Traveler's Rest. Yo, niggas piss me off, bro. Why would you kill, go all the way out your way to murder somebody and then use their car like it ain't to go show up? Like, that ain't just, like, the key piece of evidence. Like, the big-ass fucking SUV. According to the hotel, oh Edna God. had not checked in at this location. So, police immediately obtained and reviewed the hotel's surveillance footage. Lucky for them, the hotel had a security camera pointed directly at the parking lot. Edna's vehicle can be seen pulling into the parking lot of the hotel. But to the detective's surprise, the person who exited the vehicle was not Edna. Instead, it was a middle-aged man. He can be seen walking around the vehicle, wiping down both the exterior and the interior. He then walks away from the vehicle and out of the camera's view. This behavior sparked significant concerns that this man may have harmed Edna and was yeah. attempting to wipe away the evidence. Most Who is definitely. this man? Why does he have Edna's car? And where is Edna? As the detectives worked to answer these questions, they discovered two more businesses with cameras that captured both the Jeeps and the mystery man's movements. The first camera was at an antique store that was located right next to Edna's residence, which provided a view of her driveway. The second camera was at a nearby grocery store called Food Lion. Starting from Friday, August 27th, 2021, at 9.22 a.m., the same man from before can be seen pulling into the Food Lion's parking lot in his silver Chevy Cruze sedan. At 9.30, footage from the business Yo. business beside Edna's home captured her leaving in her gold Jeep. Edna makes her way to the food lion while the mystery man does some shop. Oh my god, they got your ass out of Purchasing oh a four pack of my, strawberry. Bro, niggas be so dumb, bro. You can't just murder niggas now. You can't. It's impossible. You can't just murder someone, bro. You know how many cameras are on every corner? Bro, they got a camera everywhere, nigga. ATM's got a camera, nigga. The Kroger got a camera, nigga. Target got a camera, nigga. The dog got a camera. Like, everyone got a camera, gang. You can't just walk around here thinking you just gonna be fucking killing niggas. Oopity boopity. 
and then just getting in your whip and driving home and going to the fucking local Kroger. <laughs> <laughs> Go into the local fucking Walmart. By the time he exits the food line hearted. at 9.39 a.m., Edna has arrived and is parked close to the entrance of the store. He okay. gestures to her on his way back to his car, as if they know each other. Ooh. After picking up a small bag from his vehicle, he heads back to Edna's Jeep and the two drive off together. It uh, this nigga knows Edna. He's probably a nigga who helped her out and shit. Seems like this man was no stranger and that their meetup at the Food Lion was likely pre-planned. So he came in his car. He came in his car, left in her car. So why did he do that? Or that guy mean they dating or some shit. They dating or something. Cause nobody, cause why would you leave your car but the, the bitch take you somewhere and nigga, you finna go get some type of rapper. The two then drive back to Edna's residence. Shortly after returning to her house, she placed a call to one of her daughters at around 10.13 a.m. That particular phone call was the last time that Edna's family would hear from her. Three and a half hours later, at around 1.43 p.m., the Jeep is once again captured leaving her driveway and heading in the direction of the Food Lion. To get at his 2 car. At 2 p.m., the Jeep can be seen pulling into the Food Lion again, but this time it finds its way to the back of the parking lot, far from any other traffic or surveillance cameras. The unidentified man then steps out of the driver's seat and returns to his Chevy Cruze. Yo, niggas is wild, bro. This nigga said, back to, back to reality. Which is still near the entrance of the grocery store. Oh, he promptly parks his sedan next to the Jeep. Despite the poor visibility of this footage, police believed that they were watching the man transfer Edna's body from the Jeep into the passenger seat of his sedan. At the Yo, in public, nigga? Like, bro, oh my god. Yo, niggas, it's crazy. Bro, you could have walked past a nigga killing someone a million times. You would have never known, bro. At the very least, Edna seemed unconscious as there was no movement coming from the passenger seat. He then hops back into the Jeep and drives away, arriving at the Best Western parking lot a few minutes later. As seen before, he wipes down the vehicle and then casually walks back to his sedan parked at the Food Lion. He then exits the parking lot toward the North 25 Highway, along with what was presumed to be Edna's unconscious body. The collection of video evidence ends there, but thanks to the high quality footage inside the yeah, Food Lion, cop, police buddy. were able to create a comprehensive profile of the mystery man. Yeah, we got you, buddy. Right? <laughs> like, I'd say, I was paused it. <laughs> Just to start, we paused it at the right time, buddy. Yeah, we, we got you, buddy. You're fucking good. Tall, middle aged white man with a distinctive mm. birthmark on the left side of his face. In this same footage, the man can be seen using a frequent shopper loyalty card during the <gasps> strawberry yogurt oh, transaction. Oh. Police were able to find this transaction in the store's records to obtain the personal information attached to it. The niggas didn't even use a camera to get you. Oh my god, <laughs> this is, that's scary as fuck. You are ugly as shit, you bastard. The niggas didn't even use the camera to get you. Niggas got you off numbers, bro. The owner of this loyalty card was 58 oh year old Daniel Glenn Prince. Daniel Prince lived in Rutherford County, right North back. Carolina, about 70 miles away from the town of Traveler's Rest. He worked as a traveling handyman, but his business model was questionable to say the least. His clientele typically consisted of elderly women. And as you'll find out later, Daniel had a pattern of developing intimate relationships with these customers. Mm, so this nigga used his job as a way to get into with the old bitch. Then he niced her up. To, hey, give me, give me, take me to the store, take me back. Killed the, wow. Into Daniel Prince Prince's records wow, revealed wow, that his wow. criminal history was quite extensive. He had spent 13 That's years in prison for a kidnapping conviction in what? the state of Michigan. What? You don't spend 13 years in prison for a small kidnapping? He kidnapped somebody? What? And he got out? He was released in 2009 and his parole was terminated two years later in 2011. Not only that, but he also had a handful of other convictions, including firearm possession by a convicted felon and battery. Despite Daniel's worrisome past and the comprehensive oh, surveillance hell. footage, authorities were still unable to obtain an arrest warrant for kidnapping or homicide charges. However, after interviewing Edna's inner circle, it was made clear that Daniel would not have had the permission to drive Edna's Jeep. So, detectives were able to obtain an arrest warrant based on Grand Theft Auto. Ooh. The Jeep was located in the parking lot of the Best Western Hotel, which was in Greenville County, South Carolina. Daniel's residence was located about an hour away in Rutherford County, North Carolina. So, Greenville investigators collaborated with the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office. Damn! Them niggas worked in the lines to get your ass, nigga. You're cooked, dude. <laughs> the remainder cooked. of this Not investigation. 
The body You're cam good, footage buddy. you are about to see is from September 9th, 2021, as officers arrive at Daniel's property to make the arrest. They got SWAT on your ass. Totally cooperating. Just relax. It's not doing anything. Yo, shut the fuck up, buddy. Stand up in your feet. Yeah. Walking him back. That's my wife. She's not gonna do anything. Yes, sir. Do you mind if I take your hat off for just a second, please? Do what you need. Okay. Sir, I will be very cooperative. Huh? That's crazy. He old as hell. He don't look like how he did when he was kidnapping niggas 15 years ago. Sit down, please. What the fuck? Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. This nigga looks scary as this shit. This is like bro. a Hollywood TV big time takedown or something. Is that what you Following think? Following his arrest, Daniel was <laughs> brought to the station for questioning. It became apparent very quickly that Daniel was withholding information. Yeah, buddy, what? Niggas talking about some... This is a takedown. What do you mean, takedown? That's some shit you say when you're the villain. What are you fucking talking about? So you already met my partner, John. John. Once again, I'm Greg right. Walter. Okay. Uh, both of us are investigators down in uh, Greenville County. South Carolina? Yes, sir. Okay, I've never been to Greenville, South Carolina in my life. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck. In my life. Okay, fantastic. I've never been to Greenville, South Carolina in my life. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, fantastic. Why am I here, sir? Okay, fantastic. I'll talk to you about August 27th, 2021 of this year. Where do you think you were at? I've been going all over the place. I've been back and forth to oh, Charlotte. Sure. I've been down to South Carolina. Yeah, I, I, Where's your jobs in South Carolina taking you? Um, actually, I was down to Traveler's Rest, but I don't know if it was Friday or Thursday. I know I've been there earlier that week. Mm. Okay. Oh, actually. Is, is Traveler's <laughs> Yo. This nigga, who the fuck does he think this nigga, who does this nigga think he playing with, bro? Who does this nigga think he playing with, bro? I was already going to be like, yeah, okay, for sure. Like, obviously, Traveler's Rest is a goddamn great fell fucking South Carolina. Fuck is wrong with you? I was going to Traveler's Rest, but I don't know if it was Friday or Thursday. Yeah, no, this nigga is... Okay. He's sped, bro. I've never been to Greenville, South Carolina in my life. Okay, fantastic. Okay, fantastic. But you don't remember which day specifically? No, it was either Thursday or Friday. What kind of job were you working on? I wasn't. This lady had talked to me several times. I'd been down to her house two or three times. We kind of got to be friends. Daniel proceeded to describe how he met Edna through his job as a handyman. He had gone to Traveler's Rest several times to see what she needed help with. But there was always an excuse as to why she couldn't pay for his services. Basically, it was a waste of Daniel's time and gas money. The thing is, she's so sweet and so nice, and you want to help her. Mm. And she says, you know, if I get work for her, I'll probably get other work. That's good. I mean, that's great. So you've been down there a couple of times that week? It could have been two times that week. It might have been So he ain't fuck. He ain't, he, he ain't hit. Is she just legitimately telling the nigga like, oh, I'm you doing it for free? That is crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. That nigga probably freaked out. He was pissed. Like, fuck what's going on. Once, and can right. you see my one phone? This one? Yeah. Yeah, 27th of Friday. That's never ringing a bell? No, because I have my events marked here and here. Okay. So you were down there on the 25th? I think I was down there on the 24th. Okay. All right, so... so Why what, are we... What you're telling us is... That's not you on the 27th. Oh, uh, yeah, pull them fucking glasses out, bitch. <laughs> Look at that fucking picture. <laughs> Parking lot, traveler's rest. I don't think so. You don't That's think so? Not you. That's me. Where is that? Food line, August 27th, 2021. 923. Oh my god, you're okay. hot. Okay, two seconds. Bring a bell? Yep. Yeah, so what were you doing down there that day? Um, she wanted me to look at some stuff at her house. Okay. And she picked me up at Food Lion because she wanted me with her when oh, she was um, going to go meet some guy. Yo, you're making the fakest story up of all time. He thinks I'm fucking stupid. He's just making shit up as he's fucking talking, dude. For us. Uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, um, Dan. god damn it. Private investigator. Okay, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell us about that. She wanted me to meet her down there. Okay. She was nervous because she says, I'm not sure I trust this guy. And she knows I've been in the military. And she says, will you meet me? And I go, yeah. P. So I what? went down to Food Lion and she met me. 
and he didn't show up where we went to next and she would been trying to get a hold of him and we went to her house for about two hours and then we went back to food lion and Daniel would spend half of this interview reiterating the same story, that he was Edna's bodyguard and Edna needed him to protect her when meeting up with a shady private investigator. Okay, well that just doesn't, that, well he still fucking lied because he just said it right there in his statement. They went back to the food line, but we can see in the video the nigga took the car and drove it to another spot and got out the front seat of the car. So you're the only nigga who came back to the food line alive or you the only nigga who came back and general my nigga made me a cop man i really kid you i put these niggas in the cell my nigga like. the details oh, of his too, story bro. contradicted the surveillance footage so they challenged his lies with more printed screenshots of the video evidence Sorry. what were you driving i was driving oh i'm really saying this shit before it happens like i'm really on some genius level shit i just want to remember i'm i should be a lawyer bro your wife's car or your car my wife's car you, you got a work truck no Okay. You got so a work that's truck? All, uh, coming down 25, you and her together. It could be. Okay. Yeah, here's a different angle. But I mean, you know, we've watched this car. Right? Okay. Here's y'all in the uh, hotel parking lot. <laughs> they got everything, bro. Oh, look. You get out. Nobody else gets out. How'd that I work? That. You're walking no, the car. you didn't, bro. Yeah. You wiped the entire car down. Because I was worried. You were worried. About what? And there's you getting back into your car and driving away. Oh, she's with me. Look, man. Where's that? <laughs> well, where's that now, buddy? Is her family is desperately looking for her. She's missing right now. Yes, Dan, where is it? I don't have a clue. My past from a long time ago, a kidnapping, Probably makes this look really stupid, but that's not me. Not dude. Really. I didn't. That's what we're saying, man. Bro, what the fuck are you talking about? But we know you fucking kidnapped her, buddy. We know you took the bit, bro. Ain't nobody else did it, buddy. Your kidnapping past just shows you did this shit before. You fucking weirdo. What are you talking about, bro? I didn't do anything bad. No. A liar. Despite the detective's efforts, Daniel continued to lie and deny any involvement in Edna's disappearance. For sure. But that didn't mean For that sure. he was on his way home just yet. Yeah, nah, As this interview was taking place, investigators were actively executing a search warrant on his house. A whopping 22 firearms, some with missing serial numbers, were... Damn, nigga, 22 guns. Nigga, why you got 22 guns? He really got the secret gun compartments, bro. 22 guns? I'm trying to see what the fuck do you need 22 guns for, nigga? Nigga got a gun for every fucking creature. Like, what type of shit? You got a crossbow in there? You got a stake? You fight a vampire? How many weapons can you have before you're like, all right, bro, maybe I got too many. <laughs> like, maybe I'm tripping. You can't even shoot that many guns at once. You can literally at most shoot two. Oh, hell no. Nah, confiscated from his residence. This led to Daniel being charged with several state firearm violations, including possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm with an obliterated serial number, Damn. two counts of possession of an unregistered short-barreled rifle, and two counts of possession of a short-barreled rifle with an obliterated serial number. Police also found a North Carolina license, passport, bank statement, debit card, and social security number that belonged to a 66-year-old woman named Nancy Rago. This raised serious red flags. The police feared that Edna might not have been Daniel's only victim. As the search of Daniel's property continued, investigators found more incriminating evidence that- Why? That's scary as fuck. This nigga's wallet. Validated their suspicions. They uncovered 28 different electronic devices, including several cell phones. Detectives wondered if these devices belonged to Daniel's other victims. With this evidence pointing towards a potential Tweet. serial killer, the FBI became involved in the investigation. While being held in Yo, custody, Daniel was met by FBI special agents Justin Newsom and Aaron Carlisle. Hey, sir, how are you? Good. Hey, hey how are you? I'm good. Uh, thank you very much. Oh my god, this nigga got pulled up on by the FBI, nigga. I didn't even know the FBI was real. I thought, that was, I thought that was just some fake shit they say in the movies, nigga. You really got pulled up on by FBI. 
Yes, yes. Okay. Oh shit, that's crazy. All I'm here today is just trying to oh, sort things out. I'll sort things out. Okay, right. Uh, and I want to make sure things are kind of everything's looked at that needs to be looked at. And so uh, you're probably one of the better people that can help me figure out what those things are. Oh, okay, so that's kind of why I'm here. So I'm just gonna let you. You are a very intelligent man. I'll just let you. Do <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why you say that if I'm sitting here. Well, <laughs> actually, some of the smartest people I met before sat across from me. So. Yo, he's capping his ass off. He knows you're a fucking dumbass, dude. He knows you're dumb as shit. He's just saying that so he can get your pussy open. Get your pussy wet. No, no, Come on now. Come on now. He's not idiot. As you can see, these detectives spent a large portion of this interview easing into the harder questions, showering Daniel with compliments along the way. This is what is referred to as the ego up technique. To put it simply, detectives apply this technique by praising Daniel and the crime at hand, hoping to instill a sense of pride in him. If done correctly, Daniel would then take ownership of the crime and confess. In this case, Daniel was clearly flattered, but this technique was unsuccessful in provoking a confession. You know, I honestly feel you guys are just trying to find Edna. I, I 100% I want to find Edna. Like, that's... And it's really that's our goal. It's like we care about, really, right now. I do, too. All right, let me ask you this. If you were doing my job, and I ask this all the time to people, if, okay. you, were, if you were doing my job, what would you do to find Edna? Mm. Like, you know her better than we will ever know. What would you do to find Edna? I honestly couldn't answer that for you doing your job any more than you can do in your job because I don't have... Just like the last interview, Cap. Daniel continued to deny any involvement in Edna's disappearance. They then asked Daniel about Nancy Rago. They learned that Daniel first met Nancy in 2015 through a classified ad that he posted online. Despite Daniel being a married man, he developed a romantic relationship <laughs> with Nancy while she was living with her mother, Dolores Sellers. Oh, these people are ugly as fuck. Why is that nigga's face so scary, bro? Dolores suddenly passed away in November of 20. Oh, rest in peace, bro. My <laughs> Oh, wow. But detectives felt that something was off, especially after learning that Nancy had disappeared around the same time. Nancy was never reported missing because the family would periodically receive emails or texts from someone claiming to be her. But that person always declined to meet up or speak with anyone any oh further. According to God. Daniel, he was listed as having power of attorney over Nancy's bank account, which continued to receive social security deposits and had transactions almost every day since she went missing. No, Authorities theorized that Daniel fuck. had kidnapped Nancy, gained access to her finances, and was actively using her debit card. But at this point, that's all this was, a theory. So they wrapped up Daniel's second interview and continued with their investigation. What? Over the next few days, the electronic devices found at Daniel's home were analyzed, and law enforcement determined that some of these devices belonged to Nancy, Dolores, and Edna. They also found Yo, this nigga is wild, bro. Found a phone that belonged to a Florida woman named Lee Goodman. Investigators learned that Lee and Daniel had met in September of 2018. Using information from Lee's cell phone, investigators determined that Lee had disappeared within days of meeting Daniel. However, why is this nigga killing all these old people? What the fuck did the old bitches do? What did the old pussy do to you? It's old cat. What? <laughs> The exact circumstances surrounding her disappearance remained a mystery as her body was never found. Investigators used Nancy and Lee's disappearances as a means to obtain a second search warrant of Daniel's home. And on September 23rd, 2021, the search was executed. Investigators found partially full pill bottles prescribed to Nancy. The medications included cyclobenzaprine. Tramadol and lorazepam. They also found a white bag containing various items, including zip ties, a taser, lubricant, and crushed pills in a sandwich bag labeled Ativan. Throughout this investigation, Daniel's wife was in the process of preparing to sell their North Carolina home. Part of this process included enlisting her friends to help tidy up the property. On October 9th, 2021, one of these friends stumbled upon a bee box approximately 75 yards from the home, a in an area box. mostly surrounded by trees. Inside the box was a handful of personal items that seemed related to the ongoing investigation. So, they decided to notify the Rutherford County Sheriff's Office of this discovery. A third search warrant was issued, and- Damn, <laughs> this nigga got three search warrants on his crib. God damn it, y'all haven't found what y'all need yet? 
how many times do you search a nigga crib? The B box was inspected by authorities of this discovery. A third search warrant was issued, and the B box was inspected by authorities. Inside the box was a woman's purse, rope, more zip ties, medication, an empty yogurt container. Nigga got hungry, Mikhail. <laughs> nigga got hungry, man, murder my fault. And keys for a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Beside the box, they found more items, including a shovel, a pickaxe, and straps. What the fuck is this nigga got a pickaxe for? This nigga's mining it cold. Approximately 30 feet away from the box, authorities found an interior vehicle panel, along with a black trash bag and oh a tarp. God. Inside that black trash bag was various items that belonged to Edna, including a bracelet, earrings, and a pair of shoes. All of these items were sent in for forensic testing. The residue on the walls of the yogurt container came back positive for cyclobenzaprine, tramadol, and lorazepam, the same medications prescribed to Nancy. These substances are known to induce drowsiness, dizziness, and relaxation. They also tested the white plastic bag, which had Edna's DNA on it. They believed that Daniel used this mixture of prescription medication in the yogurt to drug Edna before suffocating her with the plastic bag. The next day, on October 10th, 2021, Yo. a police canine trained to detect the odor of human decomposition searched Daniel's property but did not locate any remains. <sighs> However, the canine detected a strong scent at the location where the vehicle panel, trash bag, and tarp were recovered. Yeah. On October 13th, 2021, the FBI confronted <sighs> Daniel yet again, <gasps> oh, this time armed shit. with a mountain of evidence. To their surprise, Daniel was now ready to cooperate. According to court documents, before the interview began, Daniel said that he wanted to fully disclose his sins and stated that he knew he would likely spend the rest of his life in prison. Yeah, buddy, what the fuck is wrong with you? What was the point? What did you gain from this, bro? There are things that have to happen, and there are things that are going to happen. And I'm a realist, and I have acceptance with this. I would like a little bit of control in how they happen. Absolutely fucking not. You don't deserve that fucking right. You, you can give nobody else that right. In how they happen. If you tell them to turn that off, I will talk to you a little more freely. Mitch and niggas, I can't stand niggas like this, bro. Bro, you don't, you're not gaining anything, bro. You're going to fucking B-R-I-S-O-N, buddy. You don't fuck what you think. This camera, I'm just going to write down what you say out of your mouth on this paper, you fucking nimwit. Finally, the major breakthrough that the detectives had been waiting for. Daniel was now ready to provide detailed information about all four women. He said he would only come clean if the camera was turned off and he had an attorney present during the interview. The detectives complied with his demands, okay. but were still able to record with an audio device. Like, what do you I think this is, bro? You think them niggas ain't recording? Like, what do you... Niggas a dumbass, bro. Very frank conversation with you. If you are comfortable talking to I'm me. I'm incredibly comfortable talking to you. <laughs> okay. And I feel like I can talk to you one guy to another. I would prefer not to have the death penalty on the table. I think that that would be warranted for this degree of contrition and help. And I'm willing to help you with this stuff. Because I really, truly, it's eating away at me, man. I want it off my conscience. Before Daniel would reveal the details of his crimes, he requested a plea deal that would spare him from the death penalty and being federally prosecuted for Nancy, Dolores, and Lee's disappearances. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think you can get a plea deal on that. After authorities agreed to this plea deal, Daniel proceeded to admit to the murders of all four women. What yeah. is the number that I need to go back and just say there's a number of human beings? Okay. One, two... Three. Four. I know this sounds like there's a lot of bodies here. When describing his role in Dolores and Nancy's deaths, he said that he hypothetically assisted a this. close friend with the euthanasia of a family member. He then looked up at the detectives and said, that is one body. The close friend, Nancy, then had feelings of remorse and was apparently going to tell law enforcement. Daniel then said Nancy was the second body. Daniel did not report the death, but instead disposed of the body so he could keep collecting her social security benefits. Unexpectedly, oh, Daniel nah, also bro. described another incident in which someone tried to rob him, but the robbery did not work out well for the robber. 
He stated that after the attempted robbery, he drove to a rural area, disposed of the body, and cleaned up from the incident. While Daniel was clearly keeping things as vague as possible, he did disclose some more specific details what? about the four women's deaths. Dolores Sellers was killed in November of 2017 by a lethal dose of prescription drugs. It is unclear how this was missed in the initial autopsy. Nancy Rago disappeared in November of 2017, but was killed in January of 2018 by a gunshot. Nancy's whereabouts during those two months are uncertain. Lee Goodman was yeah, killed within the days insane, of meeting Daniel bro. in September of 2018. Her cause of death is unknown. Finally, Edna Suttles was sedated by Daniel with prescription medications and kidnapped from her South Carolina home. He then drove her to his North Carolina home, where he killed her and buried her body in a remote wooded area near his property. The detectives then asked Daniel if he could guide them to the burial site. No. Help me get that closure for Edna's family. What do you at least know a good location? I could give you within three feet. Eight months following this interview, on May 16th, 2022, no Edna's body was recovered after <gasps> Daniel was escorted to his property and was able to direct the officers to the exact burial spot. <laughs> Edna's lifeless body was found lying on her side, still fully clothed, and with her jewelry intact. Despite being buried for eight months, her body was still in decent condition, and authorities were able to perform a full autopsy. The autopsy oh, confirmed what? that Edna had been drugged by Nancy's prescription medication mixed in the strawberry yogurt. The cause of death was strangulation. On June 21st, 2022, Daniel Prince pled guilty to kidnapping resulting yeah, in death bro. in regard to the disappearance and death of Edna You Sales. gotta fucking go, buddy. We certainly want to thank y'all for joining us today. As we announce an arrest and subsequent plea deal has been reached in connection with the disappearance and death of Edna Suttles. She went missing from Greenville County on August the 27th of 2021. This investigation uncovered the man responsible, a man who has now been identified as a serial killer residing in Boston, North Carolina. Wow. 59 year old. Daniel Glenn Prince. 59. That nigga going to be in prison for the rest of his f f f fucking life. <laughs> if he's even still alive. Due to Daniel's request for a plea deal, he successfully avoided the death penalty. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Daniel Prince will spend the rest of his life in the USP Hazleton Federal Correctional Complex in Preston County, West Virginia. Or as its inmates call it, Misery Mountain. Misery Mountain? <laughs> that nigga got stuck. He was stuck. a sick-minded individual, dangerous individual. Uh, he preyed on the elderly, and he preyed on females. Now Prince will face the bitch. remainder of his life behind bars. What a bitch! Held accountable and cannot commit future acts of violence against innocent women in our community. What a dickhead, bro. Nigga was killing women, bro. Old ass women, bro. What a dickhead. What a jackass. I'm glad he got fucking sentenced to what he fucking got. Hey, if you enjoyed this fucking video, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and a comment telling me what you thought about this fucking murder documentary. <laughs> Yo, fuck that dude. I don't even know his name was. Daniel? Fuck Daniel. Fuck any nigga named Daniel.